Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. He made history as the first openly gay surgeon on television with his riveting role in ABC's hit drama, Grey's Anatomy. Yes, with the highly successful series under his belt, he's extending his reach with the reoccurring role in season two of Netflix dramedy, Insatiable. Please welcome, down to the circle, Alex Landy. <laughs> Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome right. to the circle. Thank you, the circle. thank you for having me. Thank oh, you. Of course. Oh my God. Oh, you've been having so much success lately. You know, we could sit here for eight hundred thousand years. <laughs> but first, let's talk about uh, you. Recently presented at the Glad Awards. Yes. And you had one of your co-workers and some of your Hollywood peers with you. What uh, did that moment mean to you? Um, that was incredible, you know, the LGBTQ in general doesn't have a voice and it's nice that, you know, shows like Grey's Anatomy who are so diverse kind of give everyone that, you know, that voice in this community where they don't really have one. Mm -hmm. So for me to be a, a, a presenter there was pretty, it, it was a dream pretty come awesome. true for sure, yeah. Now when did you get the acting bug and was it hard, like your climb to success? Like tell us a little bit about your journey. Yeah, so I actually wanted to be a professional tennis player, believe it or not, okay. growing up. I was into sports, my mm -hmm. dad played baseball, I was into tennis. Um, and I went to my first Broadway show, The Lion King, my dad took me there. Aww. And it was like, and, you know, that was and it. I just saw the, the visual design, just mm -hmm. everything, and everything just mesmerized me. Mm. Yeah. So you're oh. excited about Lion King coming yeah. back then. I know, yeah. Yes. That, that's going to be, uh, I love, I'm a huge fan of Disney, yeah. Aladdin yes. too. Mm -hmm. Can't wait for that. Yeah. Can't wait for that. Can't Super wait for it. excited. Yeah. Okay, well, let me ask you this. Um, as an actor and, and, and as a man, yes. what's the best piece of advice anyone has ever given you in this industry? Uh, it's funny because when I went to acting school at Lee Strasberg in New York, I think three out of my four or five teachers all said, just don't give up. This is a business where you just got to persevere, you got to yeah. grind it out. Everyone has a time that comes for them and you just got to wait for that time. So if, yeah. you, if you give up, it's over, but just keep going. And That's a that. message. It is a message. I, I mean, everyone says that, but it's true. It's, yes. the, it's true. true. It's, it's the simple. truth. It's yes. so exactly. true. And you will fail 100% of the time if you don't try. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, That's not That's my quote. That's another quote. message. That's not my quote. I can't, That's it. you know, That's take... It. Well, speaking of quotes, um, you were... Uh, your quote was, uh, Alex, Asian men are not seen as masculine in the media and that is something that I am striving to change. Why do you think that is so and what do you think needs to happen to eradicate this issue? Well, I, in, in general, I just think um, Asian men and women are kind of seen as sum submissive and mm. uh, that's how society kind of portrays them. And uh, I just think the whole movement starting with Crazy Rich Asians mm -hmm. kind of ignited that whole uh, movement where we see more Asian roles prominent on TV and film and mm -hmm. I think it's just about kind of just continuing that movement and not making it just a one hit. Even you know. even with roles like, you know, with Jet Li and Jackie Chan, the kind mm -hmm. of strong, um, strong male characters, you still think that, do you think that they're just kind of singular well, to that type it, of character? It would be nice to just, you know, stray away from the martial arts or mm -hmm. the stereotypical, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, convenience mm -hmm. store employee. Yes. Like, I mean, g getting, getting roles where, you know, the Asian guy may be with the leading white woman. It's like, mm, you know, stuff right. like that is what we should be striving for. Yeah, especially same stuff we'd be striving yeah. for, child. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. let me ask you a question. So you're you are the first openly gay surgeon on television. Yes. Do you feel uh, a sense of duty, uh, not just for the LGBTQ community, but for uh, the Asian male community as well? Uh, of course, it's a mm -hmm. huge pressure put on my shoulders, but um, it, it comes with great responsibility. Mm -hmm. I'm obviously very grateful for it. I'm going to tell you guys, the first day on set when I got on Grey's Anatomy, Debbie Allen was directing oh, my wow. first episode. Her. They threw me right into a surgery. I was, you know, using all these devices, feeling for pulses. They have three nurses around me telling me what to do, mm -hmm. what not to do. It was really a surreal experience, and obviously Debbie Allen, you know, oh, behind the camera. Debbie yeah. Allen, I, I would have been like, like, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> I would feel like a real doctor. Oh my god. Like, oh. <laughs> 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 you would have been telling me, and be like, okay, what's going on? What you got a call for? Exactly. Let me, let yeah. me check. They'd have been yeah. like, sir, it's, yeah. Alex, it's cut. <laughs> Alex, it's cut. Yeah. Um, what do you think is that is Grey's, Grey's Anatomy staying power? I mean, they've been long for, they've been on for so many seasons. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're just curators of amazing content. They, yeah. they know how to keep the viewers engaged, uh, episode in and out. They they just come up with, you know, situations and crazy accidents mm -hmm. that keep, keep everyone engaged. I mean, right. you see the wildest things on that yeah. show. Yeah, and Shonda Rhimes is just. 
absolutely amazing. Yes. 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 And then there's yeah. that. <laughs> you know, can't get past that. Yeah. But uh, Grace Valley, the season finale is tomorrow. Is tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is there any tea you can spill? Uh, what I can, <laughs> <laughs> what I can tell you guys is there's a lot of fog. Uh, you know, they're getting creative fog of all of all mm. things. Um, see, mm -mm. see, you being too aloof, you can just fog. Uh, <laughs> well, we're we gonna get we're gonna get some more out of you, okay? Because <laughs> we have more with Grey's Anatomy star Alex Landy when we return. You don't want to miss him. Yeah. It's so cute. Don't look at <laughs> up down to the Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> but you are also in a reoccurring role in season two of Netflix's dramedy, Insatiable. Yes. So tell us what yes. that's like and what can audiences look forward to in the second season? Um, well, um, for those who don't know, Insatiable is definitely a very, it's a dark comedy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's hilarious. Mm -hmm. um, everyone has to watch season one and, and watch it full through. Everyone has their preconceived notions based mm -hmm. on the trailer and the pilot episode. But I encourage mm -hmm. everyone to watch the whole first season mm -hmm. and you'll see it come full circle for cool. sure. I always look for Netflix stuff to watch. Yeah, yes. Yeah. But, you know, but for you, your, your characters are so vast going from Grey's Anatomy to Insatiable. Um, what has the acting experience on Insatiable given you that Grey's Anatomy has not? Mm. Well, it's a, it's a completely whole different demographic, right? I and mean, we got Insatiable, which gears towards the young adults, teenagers, just like Riverdale, 13 Reasons Why, it's that. And then we got Grey's Anatomy with a definitely a, a little more mature audience, you know, completely different genre, procedural hospital show. Mm -hmm. uh, it's nice going back and forth between the two. It's, mm -hmm. you know, the cast, crew, everyone's different ages. It's a whole different experience for me. Right. Um, yeah. And I mean, Alex, it seems like you just have so much going on right now. <laughs> what else can we be looking forward to? I mean, you've got Sageville, you've got Grey's Anatomy. What else do we do you have in the mix? Um, well, we, we got, uh, I, I don't know. You can't tell. I, I can say. Um, <laughs> uh, there's there there there's some projects in the in in the works that I I can't. Talk can't about tell right the people, ah. but we just have to look like, forward to uh, them. Yeah. Is yeah. It? You got. Yeah. You guys. Are is it a different wait. character from the two that we already it, see? It, yes, it is different. Okay. Yeah. It oh, is. Okay. It is definitely different. Um, possibly a little Wall Street. A little Ooh. Wall Street. Oh, oh different my characters. Okay, I'm so excited, and I've had a bit of a question. <laughs> so, Alex, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us on The Circle today. You can catch Alex on Grey's Anatomy every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern on ABC. <laughs>